Hello guys, it's DJ Don Juan here, and I'm really sorry to be coming to you guys under these circumstances. As you all know, my brother died. Um, Sean died on June 3rd, 2016, and he died a very violent death. Um, I'm here at my, in North Carolina at my family's house trying to put this all together and maintain my own house and things are hard but I owe it to you guys to talk to you about what I know and how you can help and how we can find out what happened to Sean so first of all I just want to thank you guys for all of the support you guys have gave us um, the messages, the donations, the calls, we see all of them and, and we appreciate that. We might not be able to get back to you as, as quick as possible, but we really appreciate every message and we read all of them. I want to talk to you guys about Sean and seeing if we can't figure out what happened to him and figure out a way to bring whoever did this to justice. So let me talk to you a little bit about Sean and his life the last time I saw him. Um, Sean was living in North Carolina where I live with um, Maria and, and I have a, a child and uh, Maria's got a couple of kids, and my, my mom and Stan, they live near me, and everybody just has a great life. Uh, we all work and, and, and just do our stuff in North Carolina, and, and my brother, he was, he was the same. He, he came and hung out with mom and would drink coffee with her in the morning, and he would come hang out with me and go hang out with all his friends and just do all different kinds of stuff like regular people do. And then just one day out of the blue, his ex-girlfriend, Vanessa, decided she was going to move to North Carolina. And when she moved here, Sean kind of changed. Apparently, together, they were toxic. They, they didn't, they weren't productive. They did drugs. They just, they weren't very good people when they were together. And Sean left to California with Vanessa to go stay with her brother. And that's the last we saw of Sean. He was supposed to go out there and get a job at a dealership and things were supposed to be good. But that's not what happened. Like over time, we lost track of Sean and he stopped calling us. And it's been a few years since we heard from him. But through Facebook, I've been able to track him down a little bit. Not personally, but sometimes, like, somebody would leave a message on, on Vanessa's Facebook page, or they would, um, they would reach out, and I would talk with them, and, and, and people would say, you know, where the heck is Sean? And I would say, I'm trying to find him. And... I just could never, he would never be in one spot for very long. But I knew he was running around California. So, a few days ago, I was hanging out with my mom, and she went home, and then she called on the phone, all hysterical. And she said, son, you got to get here. Sean's in the hospital. And I said, my son, Sean, because, you know, I have a son, and he, he's named after his uncle. So I immediately thought that she was talking about my son because my son was at his mom's, and I guess I had that's where my mind went first. And she says, no, your brother. So I, I stopped what I was doing, and I went to my mom's house, and we called the hospital, and here's what I know. 
that Sean was found face down on the side of the street. And they took him in. And he was pretty much unresponsive and dead from day one. But on June 3rd, this that was on June 2nd. On June 3rd, um, I was with mom and they, the doctors called from California and said they were going to do one last test and they were going to take the breathing tube out of Sean. And if, if he didn't respond, then he was declared dead. That, that you know, the, the, the greatest action, the most simplest action of your brain is to send a signal for your lungs to breathe. And his brain wasn't able to do that. Yeah. He, uh, he bled. But there's evidence that he fought and he fought the fight. And I'm trying to figure this out. So at 12.21 p.m., as I, was, as I was walking into the store to get my mama some food because she had been freaking out, I got a call from the doctor saying he'd, be, he'd been pronounced dead. And... I had to go home and tell my family that. I had to let them know. It was a hard thing to do. My first response when I heard about all this is where is his girlfriend? Why is she not surfacing because Sean was brought into the hospital on May 31st at 7.30 in the morning. And, and it was now June 3rd, four days later, and we hadn't heard from Vanessa. So where's Vanessa? So I start asking around. I call the hospitals. I call all of my known contacts for Vanessa. Nobody's seen Vanessa. No, none whatsoever. Sean was an organ donor, so we arranged to have his organs donated. And all of a sudden, Vanessa shows up at the hospital claiming to be his wife. They were going to take it as proof. But after a few phone calls, I made sure that they were going to make her furnish proof that they were actually married before they start letting her call shots. And she wasn't able to produce that. She, she, she couldn't produce anything. So then the donor people showed up and they asked her, so are you married to Sean? And she confided in the lady. She said, no, I'm not, I, we, never, we never married, we never had anything um, other than a civil partnership. Now here's the thing, a, a civil domestic partnership in um, San Francisco is honored if they had one. But they had told her that me, her, Sean's brother, was on the phone demanding answers and wanting to see paperwork, and she left to go get that. And nobody's seen her since. I want to talk to the brother that Vanessa was staying with. I want Anthony, I want to talk to Jasmine, his girlfriend. I want to talk to Vanessa. I want to know who the last person that sh saw Sean. I want to know what he was doing walking around by himself and, and not communicating with nobody. I want to know. Angie, you too, and Dino. I know some of you guys don't even know this. You know, Angie is Vanessa's mom, and Dino is Sean's dad, and Angie and Dino are communicating. So, so Vanessa is, is more than likely calling Angie and telling Angie everything that she knows 
But Angie hasn't called me not the first time. Vanessa hasn't called me. None of them people that were with Sean the last time he was seen alive have called me or my mother. And then when my son Sean came home from his mother's house, I had to break the news to him in a very peaceful, gentle way that the man he was named after, his hero, was dead. So here's what we have to say. Vanessa, you know how to get a hold of me. You can call me at any time, 828-226-2903. That's my phone number. You call me, Angie, Dino, Jasmine, Anthony, any of you guys, you call me because this isn't right. Sean was loved. Sean filled so many people's heart with happiness. And we want answers on why our friend is gone, our brother, our son. We want to know. So, thank you guys again for all of your support. I'm still in North Carolina. The latest update is Sean was able to help four people by donating his organs. And that makes me very happy. Today, his body's at the medical examiner's office to determine the cause of death. And when they determine it was a homicide, they're going to want to talk to you, Vanessa. They're going to want to talk to you guys. Do you guys not understand that? Do you guys not understand the homicide investigation you guys are about to be a part of? I would suggest that if you got nothing to hide, you start calling somebody. Because right now I'm in North Carolina. And as soon as I take care of a few things and finish helping and console my mother who just lost her son, I just might take a trip out there. So, Vanessa, call me. Angie, call me. And the rest of you guys, thanks for all of your support. I'm here for you 100% to get the answers you need. www.justiceforshawnrye.com I love you guys. Peace. I'm the world's greatest.